Ladies and gentlemen, to tonight's finals here for the UMG $200 minimum 4v4 variant. Of course, taking place here on April 26th. It is Voltage going up against GT. Of course, one best of three to decide it all. As we're loading in for some St. Marie Dumont in Bottom Restaurant, the kills are already coming in quick succession. Yemi finding two off the break as he and Voltage look to try to get an early map number one victory. And of course, speaking of best of threes, like we said, the first team to win two total maps are tonight's champions and win a majority of that $200 prize. Pretty nice bank to make it on a, on a, on a Thursday. Some Call of Duty, you know, you could use that for, uh, I don't know what you're into, maybe like a purchase of some food or, you know, I don't know, like a team pass for a tournament. I mean, there's so many options you could use with a $200 or a majority of the $200. Of course, it is spread apart. But still, though, I mean, you could, you could buy something nice, right? Buy something pretty dope. I don't know. Some 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 stuff's out there. I'm not really sure what the uh, what kids are into nowadays, but I know if it was me, I'd buy a nice backpack. I love backpacks. It's great. A huge backpack connoisseur. For those who don't know, I really need though to try the level three backpack. That that is the ultimate backpack for what I've been hearing. As I've said, backpack at least 900 times in the sentence, but. I need to try it out. Parasite told me that it's absolutely, like, unbelievable. And I think it's about time that I just kind of, you know, either talk to someone or, you know, work out that conversation, spend the money. I need to test it out because apparently it literally, you can literally fit your entire bedroom inside of it. So I, I'm willing to try it. Meta Threads, I want it. I need it. I love it. All right. Getting into the game, an early strong advantage toward the boys on Voltage, as uh, at least as far as this game is considered, or really the entire tournament for GT, they've been kind of struggling in the response. Of course, I say that with only one game to really go off of, but in their loss versus Hydra Gaming, they end up losing London Dock Search, or excuse me, London Dock's Hardpoint, rather, 250 to 176, kind of pretty much slow games from everyone but Dashy, as that's kind of to be expected, but he has been ripping it apart with the Itra, man. Absolutely unreal, this gun in his hands. It's just, it's pretty scary, to say the least. As they easily break open parking lot, and that is a huge worry right now. If you are the boys from Voltage, you started off this game so, so well. You had, you, had, you had the advantage, rather, coming out of winery, and you quickly lose that rotation toward the most important hard point on this entire map, and one of the biggest Money Hills on World War II. Dash ends up dropping inside the middle, but he's the front line of defense. Illy, shortly behind him. Ends up finding a few kills, and if Illy can make somewhat of an impact on this side of the road, he's going to set up his team very, very nicely on that rotation toward lookout post. And it looks like for GT, it's going to be Hazy, who's here first. Tosses out the nade, and it will finish off Koozie. And that's a big play coming in from Hazy in the situation. He eliminates the numbers from the early rotation that is made from Voltage. And, of course, after grabbing the scrap seconds, it's all about rebounding for this next hill. And based off the player loadouts as well right now for Voltage, I'm not seeing... It looks like only Brandon actually pulling out the intro, which I think this is his first time actually rocking it in tonight's tournament. Not sure how well practiced he is with this gun, but at least as far as most things are considered, it's going to be a little bit of a surprise to have that four-round burst in your face. But does look up post it begins to come to a close. It looks like it will be the boys from Voltage who recapture this advantage. As the game is tied currently, Kuzi locking down the hill. Players all right in front of him. This will drop at least one. The assistance on the second. And now it's about time that we reset. Bottom restaurant coming underway. As this hill is really about, you know, grabbing the seconds. It's about the control, but it's really about putting your team in the opportune spawns for winery. That second and third hill of St. Marie Dumont, incredibly important. As Illy finishes off two inside a bottom. Nearly finishes off the third as well. Picking up kills. And just like that, there's the third. And happens to find the fourth. Thanks to some assistance. Illy messaged me before this game. Says, I need the gas. And I think he's got exactly what he needs to right now. There is nearly seven. Unreal play coming in from the young god himself. As he is dominating his way inside a bottom restaurant. And that's going to set up his team quite nicely for some bottom restaurant control 
Pretty crazy stuff, to say the least. And it looks like this can be play number three right now. Dilly continuing to make an impact. Six kill streak as a team. And he might have just guaranteed his team a perfect position to grab these spawns. Hazy needs to win the 1v1 gunfight. It's not happening, but Illy is still limiting all these numbers. Sinless ends up getting taken down in a team fight, and so does Brandon Slayer. The man with the bar in his first series was absolutely unreal, but how can he transition his game plan now toward the Yitra? Winery in full effect. Yami locking down some seconds, but not if ha Hazy, rather. Is there anything to say about it? Here comes the streaks. And just like that, as one comes forward and helps Hazy grab a kill, it also allows him to earn some streaks as well. Glide Bob, Mortar Strike. And there's the fighter pilot right after the nade comes in. And right now, if you're GT, if you're a fan of this GT squad, you've got to be feeling great as it currently stands. Having some streaks in your back pocket. Granted, it's not the biggest lead in the world, but you talk about streaks, you can most definitely assume they are going to be put into use for parking lot. And if your voltage is kind of a scary situation, do we want to you know, kind of fully focus all of our attention toward that hill? Or do we want to try to back up? And Brandon actually happens to be the only player alive. Their numbers already get diminished. Streaks aren't even needed. The itches are enough. Here comes the nade. Goodbye to Kuzi. Sullyam locking things down. Teammate support. Hazy finds two. And there is that backside spawn. Here comes the glide bomb for good measure as Dashi waves goodbye to them inside of that B site position. Brandon, sinless, desperately trying to hang on to this match. They don't want to go away empty-handed. And it looks like it is going to force their hand anyway. Kuzi tries to try, or I mean, tries to try, tries to enter in, but ends up getting taken down. And it looks like his parking lot begins to come to a close. Play number eight will be sinless. He wins the fight. And it will guarantee the boys from Voltage at least the last 15 seconds of scrap points. But looking on, Dashy, the fast reaction time nearly waves goodbye to Brandon. And funny enough, uh, Dashy's name is Brandon. So it's got to be kind of an awkward scenario. You could take it down by the person with your own name. But despite that, random info in the game. Not that means absolutely anything at all, but... Fighter pilot from above, from Dashy, takes down all four huge plays, man, coming in from Flashy Dashy himself. Double positive as it currently stands. Player just toward his right, nearly eliminated as well. A one-man wrecking crew as he has been dominating in our respawns and giving GT exactly what they need to call this tournament theirs, to be tournament champions. We're also seeing a huge... Impact, a big difference in the play from Illy. Now 26 and 18, and the slang numbers show for themselves. Second set of rotations are about to be through, and we see a totally different scoreline than what we had it into. It's about an even game. Rotations were big instead of bottom restaurant and we started to see Illy absolutely go off gave his team a huge momentum boost gave them spawns helped break it open and there is two more five kills in a row eight collectively for him and Selium. and this one is looking to be locked up quick 10 kills in a row now make it 11 kills in a row as a team as they are just on point not falling and capitalizing off of every single mistake that Voltage is making. An opposite shock in this situation. As boys from Voltage are feeling it. And just like that, that's going to do it for this game. Everything coming in. The streaks are great. And just like that, that will do it. 250 to 147. As Dashi will stomp his way to a map one victory. But besides that, though, look at Kuzi. Bronze Star picking up three players. Solid play, but obviously it wasn't enough from Voltage. But uh, we compare right from that first respawn 
to the second or really the first respawn of the first series that we got to witness from GT, of course, in their semifinal matchup into here. You see a huge contribution coming in from all four players, especially Selium and without question, Illy. Thirty three and nineteen, a minute and one or really a minute inside of the hill essentially, as he has a big game with the SMG in this map. Uh, and I know he wasn't playing the best for the beginning of this series or really toward the beginning of this tournament for them, but he's obviously picked things up and given the uh, kind of second Slayer role uh, a huge momentum boost there for GT. So let's go take a look at our hardpoint scoreline to see exactly how things obviously did line out as we look at the first hill instead of restaurant. Already a big difference, 94 to 35. That was basically an overall and partly due toward that second side of rotations where Illy was just absolutely dismantling the enemy, going off, finding what was like five or six kills in a row, ended up nearly earning streaks, was just on a tear, totally limited the boys from Voltage to try to hop inside of the hill. Winery was an even one, but parking lot, much different story, and lookup post, not much, not really too much of a difference either. So you talk about for GT, their key to success is, right, parking lot and restaurant. Usually we see restaurant not be too much of a factor, but parking lot to me, one of the biggest money hills in the entire game, the ability to earn streaks, the ability to even utilize streaks to rotate toward that hill is incredibly important. So we saw GT early, especially in the second set of rotations after Illy's kind of massive streak in the first two hills. The rotation toward parking lot, they just made it look effortless toward the kind of latter parts of this game. I think they started to get their shots really underneath them. We saw the itchos coming into full force. Voltage was pretty much caught off guard with that strategy, um, kind of heading in toward this series as well. So I think that we can definitely see them turn around in the search and destroy. But the one worry, right, that you see with, with, with facing off against a team like GT, you lose the first hard point you're pretty much put into like a grinder. Like, what do we really do now? Like, our backs are absolutely against the wall, facing off against the best search and destroy team in the entire tournament based on paper because you got guys like Dashy, Illy, Selium, all known for this game type who could drop massive numbers, and Dashy, who's leading in pretty much every single KD stat in the world for open tournaments, playing against the best teams in the entire... I almost said Galaxy. <laughs> that would be a little bit excessive there, but the world is why. I'm trying not to say world twice in a row, but still, man, it's going to be very difficult for Voltage in this situation. We are going to be seeing London Ducks, so there is the ability to kind of use that tactical ability, kind of toss up those smokes, but one, things that, one thing that I'm immediately thinking of when it comes to London Docks Search and Destroy, A bomb site to B bomb site, of course, A being on the water side, B toward Main Street, Really, you don't need much of a sniper rifle. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to uh, potentially the final map of our of tonight's tournament. We had a pretty interesting uh, talk in the commercial break with producer. Glad that wasn't live. That would be pretty interesting. But I've been uh, told in the COD in the uh, Twitch chat actually, and apparently the COD burner. So take it how that how you will. I will, of course, preface that with saying in the Reddit post, I didn't see per sources mentioned anywhere. So. If it was Lan, if it was me, you would have seen per sources at least 50 times in that Reddit post. So, moving forward, not talk about roster changes right now. We're hopping into the game, right? Round number one, Yami and Sinless currently in the man disadvantage. Thankfully, they shut down Dashy, so it evens the man count up. Four players left alive. Half the lobby has dropped. Bomb in the hands of Mr. Yami. Shuts down Illy. And now it's Selium. An Itra and a Dream. Half sniper rifle, half assault rifle. Tosses out the nade. And does some damage, but thankfully Yami does not hop off the bomb site, but his leg is showing, and there is two. That is what the Itra can do, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the competitive scene. And Selium. There's the foot. He takes down his toenail. And spikes down Sinless. Beautiful play coming in from Selium. As I want to say, he makes the intro look easy, but I feel like it is easy. Like, it looks so easy to use, but despite that, though, I know in no way possible could I ever pull off something like that. Massive props to Selium. One versus two. It looked to go the way of Voltage, but not the case. Selium goes big. In round number one, I was curious, like, right, do we see any sniper rifles come through? Does Dashy kind of swap off of that role? Of course, you're not going to see the sniper rifle get utilized too much on offense, but two early picks come in. Sinless, thankfully, is trying to at least limit the man disadvantage. Takes down one onto Illy, and now it's left up to Sinless and Brandon in a two versus three spot. Thankfully, they are on defense. Bomb is left in a pretty awkward spot for the offensive team, though, in GT. Actually happens to be in the back of their spawn. Whoops, didn't grab that. 
And smart play, actually, for them to kind of put it back in Selium's hands. I'm not sure if that was a strategy to, like, you know, see who kind of is up and playing well. But if you're sinless, right, I think in this situation, the call is to maybe make a flank. But, like, if he loses this ground, he's in a pretty awkward scenario. Does he spot Dashy instead of, instead of Coal Factory? Looks like he does. There's two. Sinless. Looking for the ace. And Hazy's the only man to try and limit it from him. Hazy, though, does have the itcher in hand, and I believe Sinless might actually hop on the defuse. The smoke gets tossed out, but no, does not. He's seeking out this kill. Can he find Hazy? As the time starts to tick away, this is a very risky play from Hazy. At any point, the defuse could be coming in. And he's going to reveal his position. He just wants Sinless to hop off the bomb. Somehow gets the hip fire shots. I don't know. I don't get it. Sinless, congratulations on your ace, but it's not going to equal out to a round victory. But at least it's progressing toward some score streaks. There is a positive at the end of this round if you are a fan of Voltage, right? Halfway toward his first streak. That's something that can definitely bring Voltage back into this map. But uh, definitely the kind of MVP, not really necessarily the MVP, but the VIP, rather, is sinless right now. Definitely want to keep this man alive. Smartly going to put hit the objective in his hands. And it looks like Dashy is going to pull out the snipe rifle. Smoke gets tossed out actually through the middle. I love that strat. We don't see that happen all too often. But Dashy happens to literally just say hello to one player inside of Middle Street. And Hazy has watching over his back perfectly. As three kills come in, Hazy finally gets silenced. That would have been for the ace. And Brandon just needs to take a breather. Shuts down one but cannot find the other. And I love that strat that comes in from, from Voltage, right? They toss out that smoke through mid to just limit the opposition's vision through fire. You don't really see a smoke get tossed out there from very often, but I love that play from Dashy, right? He doesn't really mind that the smoke gets tossed out. I have a sniper. Let me just go ahead and rush through the smoke. There's no way they're going to think of this strategy. And obviously, thankfully, he has Hazy to watch over his back as three kills get found from him. But speaking of threes, right now it is a three to zero advantage for GT. Dashy looking for the cross, just happens to miss it, spots the head of one toward that backside stairs, somehow misses the shot on Takuzi, and here comes the rush. But Dashy is all too aware of it, tries to go for a little bit of a forward position, ends up getting taken down. Selium is there for one, can nearly find the second. Not going to come in. Aselium is used to finding kills, a quick succession, but this time it's Kuzi who finds two. But not much of a difference if you're Aselium in that position. Could have put your team up four rounds to zip. But the PPSH this time will come out on top. There's no streaks were obviously earned for Sinless. But now it's really about the progression from Kuzi, or really who can kind of... Uh, Pick things up as Brandon takes a look at the nice floor. A uh, London docks. It's a little bit, you know, kind of dirty. Not too nice looking, but the nice drop shot coming in from Kuzi. Brandon also finds another through that mid side cut, and just like that, it's going to be Illy last alive. And one thing that is nice for Voltage, right? His position's known. They know exactly where he's going to be lingering at. At least his prior point of view, but now where is he going to limit himself toward? Where is he going to engage? And it also looks like he does have that uh, that stun in his back pocket. So he vents to use it. It could come into full use, but it's possible when someone going toward cut. He doesn't realize that someone's on the bomb. He turns around. There's your first kill. It's been gifted to you. Here comes the second. The dolphin dive, but no, it can't come in. And just in back-to-back -back rounds for GT, they're a half a burst from winning this. And Zilli was just sitting pretty on the ground there. He was ready for that kill. But back-to-back -back rounds, man. Literally about a kill, maybe a bullet and a half difference. From from this scoreline saying 5-0, to zero, essentially. Near clutch coming through and near 1v3 for Illy. But now looking on, round number six, 
separated by one. The smoke gets tossed out toward middle again. And I believe that's actually coming in from voltage. It would be odd if it was the opposite way around. Regardless, though, first blood. Second and third <laughs> all found very quick as Dashie's just bl blindly shooting through those barrels. And I like how Dash is the one who's playing bait in this situation. Like, the man with the sniper rifle in hand is just, like, playing the entry frag position. Oh, I thought he had it. That I was about to, like, semi-jump out of my seat. But three rounds in a row for Voltage. As this time it's Yami. Picking up two kills. Or at least an assistance, rather. Is it'll be a plus 160 toward his score as I want to look, right? Three rounds in a row, Voltage. Are they progressing toward those streaks? Is anything really going for them right now? Looks like Brandon at 100, 285 for Yami, zero for Kuzi, and Sinless is at 225. So they got some decent progression. If they can put some more rounds together, they could equal out to some streaks and, and equal out to... Potentially a round-ending victory, but as kills start to come in, Sinless finds two as he's now up to 10 and 3. As they might have found the strategies out to counter these Itras. Selium in the back lines, receiving some fire. He's got two more enemies in his way, and he knows exactly where both of them are. And I love that play from Brandon. He's just trying to... Distract Selim for as long as he can. And you see Selim going to be a little bit distracted at this moment. A little bit surprised. The bomb gets planted when it does. Goes for the reach challenge and says goodbye to Brandon. We'll see you in round eight. Oh, my God. Don't tell me Selim's going to do this. Nearly turns on the Yami, and Remy, Yami's like, I got to run for my life. Selim, does he hop on the defuse? He's not going to. Where is he challenging from? Can he find the kill? And yes, another huge 1v1 victory for Voltage. As they're somehow escaping with these round victories. Another round worth about a bullet difference, man. That was unreal. And great intuition if you're selling him to want to turn that way. I mean, he has no idea... Where that last player is going to be coming from. They could be coming in any direction. But he happens to turn toward middle side cut. That's four rounds in a row. Put together for Voltage. And nice snipe coming in from Kuzi. I tried to switch over toward his perspective. But catching the enemy off guard. Finding that first pick is nice. But Dashi is ready for the re-challenge. That's going to be Kuzi trying to go for the jump snipe. Not able to find it. Brandon Slayer last up. 1v2. Dashi is there for the silence. So smart plays coming in from GT. They make their full-on push toward the A-bomb site. Drop for the first blood. But they do respond very, very well. As now we are even at 4-4. Four to four. With Sinless having a fantastic game right now. 10 and 5. Is the objective will be put back in Voltage's hands. And a B bomb site push. We're going to see what utility may be rocked at the beginning of this round. But take a look at this play from Dashy, right? This is a similar situation to what we see him rock a lot of the time. Sitting inside of lights. Spots out Koozie. A little bit of shaky shots. And here comes the re-challenge from Sinless. Beautiful bait and switch position coming through from Voltage. As Hazy sitting amongst... The opposition sitting amongst the enemy gets challenged from the side and can't win it as it will be Selium. One versus three. Reveals his position toward that backside bus. And will we see another 1v1 engagement? We've seen a lot of the guys from GT make these clutches look so effortless, but when it comes down to that 1v1, it's so difficult for them to clutch out. Here comes player number four through fire. And that's how round number nine is solved. And I believe Sinless, has he finished off with a hat trick in this round? I think he at least finds a few at the beginning. So 
So one thing that I really want to do heading in toward this next round is see where Sinless is at. 13-5. and five. Okay, not as close to streaks as I thought, but... Now they didn't win round number eight, so... Not too surprising, I guess you could say, but... Here we go, man. Map three, is it happening? GT, you're in the driver's seat. And just like that, Illy finds two. There's three eliminated, and Koozie's wondering what just happened to my teammates. But there goes the enemy. Tells Hazy to catch. It's all on Koozie, man. A lot left to do. Making his way through Subway. There's a pun in there somewhere. Spots out Dashy's position's known, and somehow Dashy escapes. That should be the round there, yes. Dashy escapes. As we will be seeing a round 11. Overtime. In our search and destroy one round to decide what happens in our final. If GT wins this, they are tonight's champions. They close things down in the 2-0. But if Voltage escapes with this round victory, they will force the map three CTF on Flag Tower, and that will be our final map. Offense round underway here for GT. We just saw them in this exact same position. They found three kills off the break. Much more aggressive, though. Different take on this one. Both teams playing passive, and if Yami reveals his position, Selim is about to rip him off his head. Glitch very, very quick. Somehow Yami escapes, though. His life is secured. Kuzi, throughout this entire round, is sitting inside of barrels. Someone needs to be watching the flank if you are GT. Dashy, though, making his presence felt just up toward the top side. Selium ready for the trade. The nade comes through. Hazy with the big one. Three versus three. Play number eight, Illy. He's about to be spotted out. He sees someone through mid-cut. Here comes the kill. Yes, shuts down one to Yami. Kuzi, the last player up as Brandon falls. This could be the game broken wide open. Shuts down one to Hazy. Nearly finds one to Selium, but it's not going to happen as overtime will go the way of GT as they are tonight's champions winning in a dramatic overtime game two here on London Docks. A 5-4 comeback after having a 3-0 start. To this search and destroy, man. Unreal stuff. And take a look at this scoreline. 15-7 and seven for Sinless despite the loss. That's got to hurt. That's really got to hurt. And you see Yami, Kuzi both played pretty decent. Brandon, unfortunately, 5-10. and 10, Had a pretty strong performance in every single respawn that we saw him play with. In the hard point, for when they burst off against bots, he finished off like 32-20, and 20, I think. And that was on... Uh, I think that was on London Docks as well, but take a look right here at this scoreline here. 3-0 start for GT, a four-round swing for Voltage, and you could argue, right? Round four, round five, it's about a bullet difference in whether or not GT wins that round. I think in round six and round, or round seven, another situation happens. I mean, you talk about, like, literally one more burst from the Itra, another bullet connects. This could be GT who either wins this one 6-0, or at least they're up 5-1. to one. Like you, you, That's absolutely arguable when you talk about some of the situations that happened on this map. But regardless, of course, GT do get it done. It was not easy by any means. And of course, a clutch was needed in round 10 and round 11. But they get it done at the last second possible. And really, they kind of get this one done on back-to-back B-site pushes, but totally opposite ones as far as their overall position is considered. And one thing that I really noticed in those back-to-back -back rounds was their ability to watch over through mid-cut. Many, many times for teams on the offense when it comes to London Docks, I have a hard time at limiting that mid-cut position. It's like, do you want to send a full four-man rush into you know the B-bomb site, essentially? Do you want to send, kind of like I have a 3-1 split, three players into B-bomb site, one watching through you know barrels, or do you want to have a 2-1-1 split? Essentially, we have two players entering in toward the site, one player in barrels, one trying to maybe limit a little bit of the enemy when it comes into water site. There's so many strategies that you can use, and one thing that I was a really big fan of was their ability to kind of play back-to-back -back offensive rounds. Of course, round 10 and round 11, both ones that they win on offense, 
similar yet totally different because they absolutely catch Voltage off guard. They find three initial early kills, which basically already eliminates the round, eliminates the chance of Voltage even making any type of clutch possible. But the difference that we see, or the similarity, rather, that we see from round 10 to round 11 was their ability to control mid-map. You noticed Ily, as soon as he was coming around that corner from um, Coal, or, uh, Coal Factory, immediately focuses his attention through mid-side. Once he finds the kill, they realize, okay, hey, we have every lane covered. We have the flank watched. We have basically in front of us watched, and we have toward our right. There's no direction they can come from where a trade shouldn't be possible. So to me, I think it was just overall smart plays coming in from GT. I was expecting them to win this uh, tournament once I saw that they were kind of involved. Once they won that game versus Hydra, I was pretty sure they had it in the books. But you got to give props, man, to Voltage. Uh, Sinless, Kuzi, Yami, and Brandon. Very solid tournament, right? They definitely kind of show up when it came down to the search and destroy. Had a pretty, you know, rough effort in the hard point, but really, you talk about Illy's performance coming out of the hard point, 33 and 19. His position inside of bottom red to the second set of rotations really changed what could have been a lot closer map number one. And like I said, a, a few situations go a different way. Maybe we see Voltage take game one around 11 and game two. I mean, it, it's very possible. And maybe we see Voltage take this tournament. Maybe we see Voltage take this tournament.